on Explorations This Time, how lending a hand has taken on a whole new meaning. This is Explorations, unlocking the mysteries of the most complex creation in the universe, ourselves. we have yet to exploit to their full. We know that we control our body with our mind. We can also control our mind with our body. The two go hand in hand. We can alter the chemical balance of our brain by submitting it to artificial changes, for example, by drinking alcohol. Alcohol acts primarily on the brain's nerve cells by slowing down their chemical reactions. But do we actually need to drink alcohol to generate this effect? In this experiment, the subjects have been told that they are drinking cocktails containing large quantities of vodka. In reality, the drinks are totally non-alcoholic. Over the course of the experiment, their reaction times slow down considerably because their minds are conditioned to anticipate the effects of having too much to drink. It's one example of how the mind can influence the body. It was the Russian scientist, Dr. Pavlov, who first carried out studies into conditioned responses. Pavlov's dogs were taught to associate the arrival of food with the switching on of an electrical light. When the light was turned on, but no food appeared, the dogs still salivated expectantly, showing a conditioned response. This ability could have positive benefits for us all. It could be used to boost our immune systems to fight disease and infection. The strange thing is that we take it for granted in many respects, the way the mind can actually affect the body. We know that if we get frightened, we feel sweaty, our heart starts palpitating, we feel anxious, we know that. All of these things are the way the mind affects the body. The big question is, can the mind actually affect the immune system? Can it affect the way we fight disease? Here, patients were given an adrenaline injection to boost their immune system the same time as a sherbet candy. On the third day, without their knowledge, they were given a harmless injection, but still the candy. Blood was taken before and after the injection. It was found that the number of white blood cells, the foot soldiers of the immune system, had increased dramatically. This is because the brain communicates with the immune system in several ways. Nerve cells that can be traced back to the brain terminate next to the lymph nodes, control our immune system. And we know that some brain hormones have an effect on white blood cells. We know that this brain hormone, ACTH, uh, in stressful situations is one of the things that's released into the blood. When we put this brain hormone, ACTH, into them, it slowed their ability to grow larger, to divide, and inhibited their ability to make antibodies. The next step is to see if it is possible to stimulate the immune system through positive thought and mind control to combat disease. There is no evidence that your mind can cure disease. The evidence suggests that the mind may well alter the progression of the disease or your susceptibility to disease. And that in itself can be extremely important and something well worth investigating. 